Um, so, uh, you know, there's uh, the standard Google Map layer underneath. You can put Yahoo Maps, you can put Bing Maps, you can put uh, whatever layer you want in there. And what we have on top of it is basically our uh, own geospatial layers, our own custom data in PostGIS, which is uh, building footprints for a Met for Buildings, right? So I can, you know, turn mine on. Oh, look at tiles not being drawn correctly. What is the Met for Buildings? Is it just for a specific area, or is it this company that provides footprints? Uh, this is something from the city itself. Okay. So, you know, you, you go to any, every city has geodata that they publish. And you can just basically grab whatever you want from them and and use it. And everybody does it different licensing. And, and Which is goofy because otherwise the city of Medford is mired in about 1980. Oh, well, okay. surprised you just that Yeah. So, you know, you can do that. You can switch the underlying data set. I don't know what's going on. Some requests are going back. I think they are cached incorrectly, but. You know, you, you basically are overlaying your own data. You can grab this data, you can edit it with something else, and you know, overlay it. Um, so that that's kind of boring. Let's let's go and do something more interesting than that, right? So, since it's your data and it's in your spatial backend, you want to be able to query it, right? So in this case, you know, I can click on this thing, and I can summarize and get information for it, right? So it's it's going back in, doing a very simple spatial query, and coming back and giving me information about that. What I also have, I guess, I got tax loans. So clicking, querying, getting information back, not too exciting, right? It's just what you would expect, something normal. So let's dial it back here. Um, let's do something a little bit more uh, interesting, right? Uh, let's basically do summaries. Summaries of, uh, you know, data about uh, tax loans. So if I click on different areas here, what I'm getting is an update down here, and then I can switch this. You know, for 200 feet, this is actually going to the database and doing group buys, and just showing up the results of the group buys. Um, so you know, looking at all the data within 400 feet, summing it up and showing the results right there. Um, I look at the source, you actually see that it's really only one query, really simple stuff. Not so exciting. Uh, I'm gonna skip this one. It's kind of boring. Let's do this one. So, uh, you know, I'm clicking here, and I'm actually uh, sending back the vectors. Um, when you want to show a whole bunch of data, you usually do it as tiles, not as vectors. And there's reasoning for that, and I'm probably going to talk about it, so I'm not going to get into it. But um, I wouldn't actually, sh if I zoomed out, um, I wouldn't want to see every single parcel pulled back as a vector because of uh, multiple reasons on how uh, JavaScript objects have an actual overhead. And we have a lot of JavaScript objects that have a lot of overhead. Um, image, in, in, you know, on the other hand, browsers are really good at showing images because um, they've been doing it for a while. So in this case, you know, I'm clicking in different areas, and when I'm clicking, I'm retrieving the parcels as uh, vectors, and you know, I can perform a union. I can say, you know what, union all these things before you retrieve them back. So if you look here, and I'm zooming in, you know, here, there, without the union, I click on it, now we're the union, right? I don't want the union, I take it back. Now I get the individual vectors. I want 400 feet, click on it, Maybe I want them union again because I'm going to some reason. And there you go, right? So yeah, that's that's better. You know, what else can I do? Well, you know, I'm not saying do this, because this is exactly how you would get a SQL injection bug. But I just have it as a demo so you understand that you know you would be doing this somewhere else. Uh, so here, for example, you know, doing standard query and I'm saying uh, you know, just give me the geometries of the schools and change it to this particular spatial reference and return them back as GeoJSON, right? Click in here. Oh, uh, wait, no, run SQL. There you go. So I get all the points back, right? Not so exciting, school points. So I go back and it's like, okay, there's schools here. That's great. You know, what, what else can I do with that? Well, your queries can get as complicated as you want them to be, right? Um, Mid school buildings that contain a school point. So, you know, grab this uh, 
buildings, grab the schools, and show me the ones that contain each other. Boom. So these are the buildings that contain school point. Okay. Uh, streets that are near schools. Right. In this case, it's. I know this is in UTM, so this is in meters. So basically, saying, if you don't remember, go back right here. I run this. Those are the schools, and I want the streets that are near schools. <laughs> streets. You know, 500 <coughs> meters, maybe one a kilometer. And you know, those are streets that are within one kilometer. And uh, what else? Uh, tax lots, you know, you can get as crazy as you want. What is this? Tax lots clipped to 500 foot buffer of schools in Word 3. You can get as crazy as you want. That's the only thing that I want to uh, convey. What if you have a network, right? What if your street is a network? And you want to be able, and this is not going to be the most efficient way of doing it. It's just to show you that you can do it this way. Uh, So it's open layers is the JavaScript front end. GeoServer is the thing that is generating the images and re uh, yeah, it's generating <coughs> the images. And PostGIS is the actual thing doing everything, the actual processing. Um, so in this case, for example, I want to be able to these all represent pipes, and I want to be able to do things like uh, you know if if the water starts it starts raining a lot. Like, which direction is the water going to go in? Well, you know, I click here. I no starting point, maybe here. There you go, right? So it basically starts there and goes that way. Um, let's say that I do this one. The water starts right here. It's going to go that route. If the water starts right here, it's going to go that route. So there's a directional thing out of the features, and, you know, I can explore and do analysis on that. Um, and you know you can imagine you can do routing. You can imagine you can create your own custom things. Blah 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 blah. blah. You can do all kinds of things. Uh, OpenGL were the guys that actually did this demo, so I didn't write it. I just stole it. Um, what? Stop me. Yeah, you know, it's not the only thing that's doing. <laughs> so uh, um, so that was that. Uh, what were the other? The, what did you think? Like, are there any questions on that? So I'll answer that for you for, uh, let's see, Geo Data San Francisco. There's Open Geo Data at the bottom. Yeah, you're supposed to let the audience answer. Yeah, I oh, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, can the audience answer this? Where would you go to go th get data? For sure, something? I can answer. You have to go to the city. I mean, there are some web resources um, where people have listed, um, you know, where to go, where you can get um, publicly available geodata. Oftentimes, though, it's best to go to the city's JS department. Yeah. San, I mean, various cities have stuff online. San Francisco has. It's all online, you make an account, it's very easy to download, but you know, there might be other cities that... There's stuff there. It's quite often. There is for city for county, and all the data they give you is in like a format that they said to parse yourself. Right? To get it yeah. no, uh, why would they give you a, a format that you have to parse yourself, well, usually? They, because they, they, that's how they store it. They yeah. No, so, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, usually you can always ask for shape files from these people, Sometimes. and they'll give yeah. you shape. No, 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 no. Like, so, so Mac Don can parse all the Portland data. You get all the Portland data in like an HP API, um, but then because Mac wrote a Ruby parser for everything that they ever published, which was every random format they had, including mm -hmm. like CSV files with like geohashes, like embedded. Yeah. Uh, and it's basically yeah. that they've developed the data, like he was saying counties, you know, whatever public agency has developed the data for their own use. So that's Correct. why cities have it. So it's in whatever format's best for them, Correct. whatever software they've been using it in. And that's your answer. Well, no, and, uh, so there are, like, also, there are blocks, though. So, like, in Seattle, you have to go to the department and ask them for a CD because they won't put it online because they contract yeah. you. Yeah, so, so there are licensing issues for sure. Um, but, yeah, my, my experience has been the most reasonable cities will give you data, and there's. Yeah. 
We can have a different conversation about this. I am not drunk enough beer to actually like give you good. So, any other questions? Did you just, there are. You really couldn't predict because you know the assumption. Oh, you know San Francisco and you know Seattle and the other cities have much, yeah. would have much better data. But then you run into random places like Medford because in a lot of cases it's the case of one staff member in like the mapping department and the tax department decided, hey, we should put all this stuff online, and they happen to know something about computers, and the mayor's like, yeah, sure, go ahead, whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, like, they're they're definitely getting better. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can that. totally have a conversation about you know opening geodata, but let's move on. <laughs> right there. I serve on the panel on the Technology and Telecommunications Advisory Committee. We're an organization that stands in between the city council and staff. And there are give me a beer afterwards, and we'll talk about all the reasons why staff doesn't want to release that data and how you can talk them into doing it. <laughs> and then there's been torrents, but we can talk about that at some other point. So, uh, any other questions as far as the technology and not opening the data? In that Java uh, front end, is yeah. there a way to custom your query, customize? Those are preset queries. Can you build no, so, the, I mean, you saw that I was actually switching the query itself, and I was just grabbing that from that, uh, it switched from 500 meters to 1,000 meters. You can just put whatever and SQL inject the crap out of it and it'll work. Um, that's why I said don't do it, but uh, you can. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I can give you a link to the actual place you can grab all the source code and look at it, not a problem. Um, over here, you have a question. Oh, I, I actually just got an answer you want us to move on. Go to California, L-U-E-I-N, and that's a statewide G GIS database for all kinds of information in California. It's shared all over the place. Um, the other place that we like to go is California is tax assessors offices. For yeah, and they, virtually they, every tax assessor is going to have some geographic data for parcels. And some of them will give it to you, some of them will sell it to you, and some of them don't have it. They have the tables. But every tax assessor has some form of geographic database. And almost all of them have the number to the GIS department. In what their was county. the statewide thing again? Huh? What was the statewide thing again? Lupin. Lupin. L U P I N. And then I like just prepare for the next demo. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Any other questions? Technical, not data. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so anybody wants to answer that first? Can you repeat it? So basically the question is, what if you have a whole bunch of data and you're querying PostGIS with a lot of data? Well, I mean, in that case, it's down to, anytime it's a back end, it's a question of how much are you willing to spend on hardware and tuning? Um, I mean, in, in theory, any amount of data is, is possible to query. It's a question of, you know, how big of a, how many machines can you afford, how much staff can you afford to do? Um, and that's going to be true of, of any back end technology. Rephrase the question, maybe. I understand that. What I actually want to know that you have done any kind of. Yeah, so you can. Comparison between post GIS and other back end database. So, I mean, basically, there's there's distributions of post GIS that are basically 200 million features, and it works fine, it's, except that. When you reach that level of data, you should actually, there's a lot of tuning that you have to do. There's a lot of things that you have to do with the disks. There's, a, you have to put the logs in different places. You cannot use the standard shared buffers, uh, you know, tuning parameters. You actually have to change those things. Um, so you can actually scale it. I mean, most people, and then there's tricks too as far as clustering things that are together with this. Um, it's, uh, it's totally doable. I mean, and I, I've used it with a lot of data before. It's just it's not trivial to tune. I mean, that's just Postgres, but you can ask that guy. He's the core developer for Postgres. So, um, yeah. 